so some of you, I think I've spoken to a lot of you before actually, um, you may know me, I'm a PhD student at uh, Cambridge, uh, still uh, not quite submitted yet, so no need to ask me again. Um, I'm also a long time volunteer at Raspberry Pi Foundation, so my involvement started, uh, well, since we first got alpha boards available, um, partially as my uh, PhD supervisor, the trustee, I got my hands on an alpha board, started hacking with it, helping out here and there. Um, my most visible thing, which I do, um, still do at the moment, is uh, maintaining the uh, SD card images of Raspbian that the foundation puts out, as well as some other uh, miscellaneous software development work. And I'm uh, starting to put up more of the uh, little projects I do and um, things I create online. Um, so I'll be sticking those on muxup.com if you want to have a look or uh, sign up to my, follow my Twitter person at muxup. So um, Makey Makey is a product which uh, many of you will have seen before. It's essentially a really, uh, it's a really great engaging piece of technology which allows you to turn almost anything into a touch sensitive input. Um, the trick with Makey Makey is that it's got a microcontroller on there so you can actually plug it into um, any computer and it will act as a keyboard input. Uh, however, if we're using, as we are, the Raspberry Pi, we have GPIO pins, so we can do this sort of interfacing without you know, worrying about that. We can you know, write a little bit of code, interpret our input how we want to, or in fact generate key events. So it's, um, you know, it's a great product in many ways. It's open source hardware. There's lots of activities people have created using it. But especially when you compare it to something like the Raspberry Pi, which is obviously you know, 25, 30 pounds, it costs 40 pounds, which is quite a lot, particularly if you are going to you know, have a whole classroom full, work, uh, full of them. And uh, I mean, you know, we call ourselves the maker community, and it's kind of a shame if we rely on these products, which are you know, prepackaged, it acts as, it, as some sort of magic circuit board, when actually the principle it's based on is really simple and actually really fun to learn about. So if we can do it cheaper, we can learn something along the way, and you know, have that feeling of accomplishment that you know, we've created it, then all the better. So that's what you know, I'm trying to, hopefully I'll be showing you in the next 15 minutes. So the basic requirements are, it's, um, you know, it has the same ability the Makey Makey has. So the Makey Makey, you plug it in, you, um, as long as you hold on to the ground wire, you can then attach um, one of the alligator clips to any sort of input, so sweets or you know, a banana, a lot of you have probably seen the banana piano example, or uh, you know, apples or uh, even, um, even graphite drawings and so on. So we can, we can do all that stuff and you know, make it as low cost as possible. So I've gone for less than 10% of the price of Makey Makey for the same number of inputs, or just for a single input, let's say less than 50p. And hopefully I'll be able to tell you about all that and explain how it works in this 15 minute talk. <coughs> so if we take a little step back, you know, let's go to the, you know, the real basics of doing physical computing with Raspberry Pi, which is hooking up a push button switch Obviously, you want to do something a little more fancy, but let's start there. And what I'm showing here on the um, display is perhaps what many of us have tried as our first naive attempt to wire up a button. We think, okay, I've got my input, I've got some power here, all I need to do is you know, put the switch in the middle, and when I press the switch, it'll be high, and when there's nothing, it'll give you nothing. But of course, that's not quite all you need for a, for a push button. Um, what we actually need is we put a resistor in there to create what's called a, um, well, in this case, a pull-up um, circuit. And actually, you know, you can get this previous version working just fine if you use the internal pull-ups on a Raspberry Pi. But let's uh, let's imagine we're doing it all, you know, we're doing it all manually. We want to see all the components we're using. So what you end up with is we have our we have our switch, we have a um, a resistor, um, which will mean that um, the normal state of the GPIO pin is going to read as, as high. Because the problem we had before was that when this switch, is, uh, when this switch here is open, when it's disconnected, um, it's not going to read zero because the, it's not connected to ground. It's connected to nothing. It's some floaty, floating value. So you're actually going to get some reading which will be zero or one depending on you know, what noise you've got um, in the area, what electrical interference you're getting. So this sort of circuit is what you create for a basic push button switch. So as I said, this is a pull-up, so it's going to be normal one, and when you press the switch, it'll go to ground, so you'll, in your Python code using RPI GPIO, you'll get a zero. And it's actually almost, well, no more complicated at all to turn that into a Makey Makey style input. 
all we're really doing is we're replacing the button with a person. And as we'll discuss, you know, a person is a bit different to a button, but uh, in this case, we're, you know, I'm a person, I'm holding, I'm creating connection from the ground to another, another component. So I am a switch controlled by you know, my, you know, whether I decide to move my arm or not. But a person is, isn't just like a wire. You know, a person, we can imagine them as you know, a big sack of bones and blood and what have you and some brain in there. And that has a resistance. So actually what we've done is we've introduced a resistor on the other side, which creates a circuit which is a voltage divider. Um, so this is a you know, very common basic circuit in electronics whereby the, um, so we have here is our input voltage at the, at the top, we should be able to see, which is the 3.3 volts connected to the Raspberry Pi. And the divider comes into effect here, which is where we're reading it of a GPIO. Um, because, and depending on the values of these two resistors, our, you know, our person resistor and the resistor we've connected, that will, the ratio of these resistors will affect what voltage we get out at the GPIO pin. And of course, the Raspberry Pi, we only read digital one or zero. But there is a, you know, what will, you know, it, Raspberry Pi will read something, anything below like 0.7 volts, say, as a zero, and anything above uh, whatever the threshold voltage is at 3.3 volts, a uh, couple of volts, as, as a one. You know, you, do, you don't really need to worry about how it works because it is nice and easy to hook up and it just works. But, you know, the, or it's literally, you know, well, as soon as you get into anything, obviously you start looking deeper and deeper. One could get into very complicated explanations for, you know, how you get a you know, current from one end to a wire, travels from one end to a wire to another. But the first thing we all learn with electronics, I imagine, would be Ohm's law. And you can work out what's going on here simply applying that one rule, which is the voltage is the current times by the resistance. And essentially, all that I'm doing here is noting that the, uh, the, the voltage here will be um, that the, the, will be the current times by these two resistors, which are connected in series, so we add them. And if we do a little bit of algebraic substitution, we end up with this expression for um, the GPIO output, which is, uh, so we have a ratio between these resistors. And the important thing here is just that we have, a, we have R2 at the top, and we have something involving R, R1 and R2 at the bottom. So if we have a really large number on the bottom of our, of our fraction, then we're going to get a really small voltage out, which is exactly what we want. We want this GPIO voltage to be you know, 0.1 volts, so it's going to read as a zero. So this is why we need a really big R1 resistor, so that we will end up with a, you know, if we have it being 10 mega ohms, say, then when this circuit is complete, it acts as a voltage divider, and the voltage we get out is really small. So that's the rough theory, which, um, you know, you can have a look later, or I can talk to you about it if you um, want to go over that again. But the but the actual wiring up is totally trivial. So I'll be around so you can have a close look later. But literally all that we need is a, um, a single normal resistor. So a, this is a, a, t a 10 or 22 mega ohm resistor. Um, you can, 22 mega ohm resistors you can't buy in Maplin. Um, with a, a little bit of persuading, you can, get, you can persuade them. If they look on their stock computer, they do have 10 mega ohm resistors and they'll find that for you. Or just order online for CPC. You know, they cost about four or five pennies or you know, less depending on the quantity that you're ordering in. We need a couple of jumper leads. I've gone, uh, female to female is most handy because what we can do is we can connect a jumper lead from, so we connect it in a little loop essentially. We have uh, one end of a jumper lead goes to the GPIO input, the other end goes to the resistor. We then go through, plug the resistor into another jumper lead which goes to a 3.3 voltage into our voltage source. And now to create the actual divider, all we do is we take our crocodile clip, um, hook it onto the GPIO side of the resistor, and attach, and then we can attach the other end to whatever we're going to use as our input. So in this case, it's uh, some sweets. And then, of course, we have an extra jumper cable, which we need just to hold on to for the ground, which is the same limitation that you have with a makey makey. There are other forms of sensing touch, like capacitive sensing, um, Pimeroni cell, one of those but those are somewhat more complicated to explain. So I've stuck with this you know, more straightforward way of achieving results. And um, admittedly, these things, you can't really buy them in single quantities. So if you're only going to make one, it is going to cost you a little bit more than 50p. But, uh, if, you, but if you imagine, well, even if you only want to do 10 of them, it easily comes, comes to that cost as jumper leads are you know, 
10p each, Crocodile Lead, 15p from Keytronic, and as I said, mega ohm resistors are uh, you know, 10, 20 mega ohm resistors are pennies. So, oh, and here's a picture of uh, it wired up, it, which may or may not be uh, easy, to, easy to see. You can come and talk to me after this little set of talks and I'll uh, show you it in person. And in fact, I will show a, a quick demo of it working. And due to the, th so one of the things you can do here is that, well, one thing that Makey Makey does is it filters the input that you get because sometimes you get a little bit of noise. Uh, I found it's not really necessary, except it does get a little bit noisy as I uh, plug this in and the speaker powers up. So, uh, so all I've done, which we, well, maybe not, it's fine. So what I have is I've written a little Python program which will play a sound depending on when I touch one of these things. So we have a cat which is perhaps under, yes, which is perhaps in danger of being hit by a car or whatever. Um, and of course we could have a, a large number of inputs or reproduce any, any of the things you've done using Makey Makey could be done using this. And the great thing is you can see exactly how it works. We can have the full circuit here, all the code which we've, um, we've written to, in order to show how it works. I'll just unplug this in case it gets a little bit uh, noisy. And you know, this is the complete Python implementation of what's running here. All we're doing is checking the GPIO input, the same as if it was a push button switch, and then playing an audio sample once we read that input. And that's roughly uh, all that we have, all I have to, uh, that's exactly how it works. Uh, at the end of this section of free talks, I'll be, I'll be you know, somewhere around here so you can have a closer look at how it works. Uh, so if you, if you want to you know, download a copy of the tutorial, um, it'll be online on that URL at mucksup.com sometime over the next couple of days. Or you can put your email address and I'll send you a notification when it's up there. Uh, I should plug the fact that I've got a book coming out very soon, next uh, couple of weeks. Learning Pi from Raspberry Pi, but authored by myself and Ben Everard from Linux Voice, which a couple of you may, some of you hopefully met yesterday. Um, you should all, you know, if you're into compilers like myself, you should obviously come and talk to me because there aren't many of us and we like to geek out. And also, you know, you should sign up to my newsletter about LVM Weekly, or else, you know, come and talk to me. And also, as it mentions my birthday, but I'm going to be giving some presents out. I have a, I have a, well, not that many, but say ten or so sets of. Um, uh, jumper cables and resistors just so you can go away and hook this up uh, as soon as possible. So after this little set of talks, come and talk to me and I will, uh, I'll hand them out. Thank you very much.